I think the first time I performed in front of a crowd, it was freshman year of high school, and I did an acoustic version of E.T. by Katy Perry. I was so nervous, I had no idea what I was doing, um, but I got a standing ovation so that I was like crying by the end of it. After that moment, I was like, wait a second, maybe, maybe I could take this somewhere. <laughs> I started writing my own songs um, with my friend Rachel. It was going into freshman year of college and we were just really bored during the summer and we were like, hey, we see all these other like boy bands writing their own songs. Like we're two talented girls, like let's, let's just rock it. <laughs> it was kind of hard to find gigs for people, uh, yeah, like under 18 and also a lot of people, um, yeah, didn't really want to like have ladies open up for the rock band like with acoustic guitars so <laughs> it was it was a transition for sure with writing even the first few songs uh that i was working on it was definitely like a way to get out some emotions for myself it was kind of like therapeutic in a lot of ways um and that's, i still do the same method today uh i think i write songs mostly for myself and then i'm happy that other people can relate so nice guys, I feel like I kind of wrote it um, just as a general experience I've had as a woman. <laughs> and it's, it's mostly about just like, you know, being in the dating scene and um, there's a lot of people out there that maybe uh, act one way, but they have expectations um, for their niceness and expect something in return. And like, it can just be kind of disrespectful, so. I just wanted to write a song roasting everyone because um, I was sick of that behavior. So I don't know. I feel like people got to know what's up. I feel like I just wanted to match the guitars and stuff with that sort of like passive aggressive lyrics I was going for um, and just very like straightforward kind of rock tone. It's pretty just like cut and dry. <laughs> Thank you.
So Beach Party started in 2015, technically, and it was just me and my little acoustic. I would do my open mics to maybe 10 people. <laughs> and then in 2017, um, there was a battle of the bands and, and I couldn't compete by myself, so I had to find bandmates. Um, and then they just stuck around. <laughs> it really worked out that way. Shut up, count your calories. I never look good in mom jeans. Wish I was like you, blue eyed blonde, perfect body. Maybe I should try harder. You should lower your expectations. I know quick, no Barbie. I was never cut out for from clean. If I get born petty, do you think he will like me? a pretty decent local following and like things were definitely uh, heading the slow race <laughs> towards success. Um, but a year after we put out this EP called Prom Queen, uh, some I don't know why it went viral, but the song Prom Queen went viral on TikTok uh, and the numbers followed on Spotify like immediately after and it kept growing and growing. And then I think people were just checking out other songs too. It was honestly very surreal. With TikTok, I mean, everyone applies it differently, and it, it's it's interesting to see how the lyrics are interpreted uh, visually. Because some people are definitely taking it more seriously than others, and some people, you know, just want to have a fun time, um, regardless of what the message of the song is. <laughs> I think my initial fears with some social media stuff is that like uh, people wouldn't take me seriously as a musician anymore. Um, more like an influencer or something, but I think with the way TikToks evolved, that that's not the case. And like, it's really promoting uh, music spontaneously to so many random people. <laughs> so I definitely struggled with my own eating issues in high school, but then when I was in college, I had a good friend of mine who was uh, developing an eating disorder. And, you know, I could relate to that mindset, but it, you know, when someone's going through it, it's very hard to help. So I kind of wrote this song for her as a way to show her that like I understood, but also um, to maybe steer her in a healthier direction. Um, and, and I was very surprised that so many people related to it. I, I really thought it was going to be like a B-side or something like that, but it's clear that body image and eating disorders and all that stuff is like giant today still. A lot of people have come up at the shows um, and said that it's helped them with their eating disorders, which I'm so grateful for because, you know, when I was going through that, um, I talked to no one about it and I had no outlet for it at all. Um, so I'm happy that people can use music to, to get better. I would say my songwriting process is usually in solitude, usually in my bedroom. Um, and I really have to feel into it. Like I have to be 
not just in a mood to write, but almost like a very strong emotion, whether it's positive or negative. A lot of times the songs come out pretty quickly. They almost like write themselves. It's like I'm trying to just get it out everything from my heart, but instead of writing it in a journal, I'm writing a song. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, Cloud9 um, is, is kind of a sadder song for me. I wrote it right before I was going through a breakup, almost as like a last resort um, to feeling romance and like saving the relationship. Um, but for everyone listening, I hope it's a song um, that just sparks love and reminds them of happy times and relationships and stuff. Uh, and I think it can kind of be applied to any relationship really. <laughs> Musically, I was also going for like an optimistic sort of sound to accompany the lyrics. Um, the, the great part about the song though is that it has been able to evolve um, with popularity and we did like a new version with Tegan and Sarah which was really fun. Now when I sing about it, uh, I just think of myself in a happier place and, and feeling loved and being in a healthy relationship. I feel like Beach Money is almost like an exaggerated version of myself. Like the lows are very low, the highs are very high. Where um, you know, in everyday life, I'm I'm pretty stable and neutral. <laughs> but the songs allow me to explore those emotions in a way that like I probably wouldn't feel comfortable talking about with most people. I like making all of the albums and and EPs have their own themes, and she kind of fits into those themes, like aesthetically, emotionally. She's sort of just like an archetype of whatever emotion I'm feeling during that piece. The future of Beach Funny, uh, I, I'm not, I really don't know. I'm trying to keep an open mind. Um, definitely want to release many, many more records, play some awesome shows, get to rock out with everyone, uh, but who knows? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep uh, cranking out music. <laughs>